Hello again. So in this session, uh, I'm going to show some examples of this complex potential for some canonical flows. And first of all, we are going to calculate uh, these complex potentials for some of these canonical flows. And then I'm going to um, show different properties that they have and we can use. Okay. Uh, so let's first I'm going to do this for uh, four flows in these sessions. So the first flow that I want to start with is uniform flow at angle alpha. Okay. So let's plot this, why, why, do we, why do I mean by uniform flow at angle alpha? Okay, so say we have this, this is our coordinate system. Okay, so we can have some flows that are this uniform flow that is kind of uh, flowing with angle alpha. Okay, so let's find, we want to find if this is x direction and this is y direction and here the angle is alpha and then we have velocity u, this is the velocity u, this goes with velocity, velocity u at e, every point. Um, so we have a uniform flow that has an angle of alpha with respect to the x direction. So we want to see um, what are going to be the velocity potentials here. So if this is a u vector, this is going to be u cosine alpha. If this is u vector. And this is going to be, this component is u sine of alpha, right? Okay. So now based on these, I want to find the uh, uh, complex potential for this flow. So, Again, u, which is the velocity in the x direction, here is going to be u cosine alpha. And v, which is going to be the velocity in the y direction, is going to be u sine alpha. Okay, so this is going to be my flow. So now let's find the velocity potential, the complex, uh, the complex potential, actually. So the complex potential, we can find it from this formula. Let me, let me use this formula. So WZ, um, which is going to be complex velocity equals to DF over DZ equals U minus IV. And what are U and IV here? It is U cosine alpha minus I sine alpha. Right, I just factor u from here and replace it. So what is this? The, this is the definition of e to the minus i alpha. And so this becomes u e to the minus i alpha. So 
if we now integrate this, so this is df over dz equals to that, so df over dfz over dz equals to u e to the minus i alpha, so you can integrate this with respect to z, and you're going to get fz equals to uz e to the minus i alpha. Okay. So this is an important formula for the, the complex potential for a uniform flow with angle alpha. So if, if alpha is zero, that meaning that the flow is completely in the x direction, the complex potential is just going to be u times z. Okay, so this is how you can, you can find this. And now let's solve another example uh, for another flow. So this time I'm going to find the complex potential for a source flow at Z naught. So the source flow, if you remember, is just uh, a source that is kind of leaking. For example, it can be a gas pipe, something like that, that is leaking. And then it creates this kind of source flows. So these were like the stream, fu stream functions or streamlines of this. And if you remember from before, um, for a source flow, the velocity that we found is q over 2 pi r. So here I'm just going to write it as the radial velocity is going it's it's only it only has a radial velocity so the radial velocity is going to be m over 2 pi r m is a constant which depends on the flow rate. And it's going to increase, decrease with uh, radius. So as you go further, you become further away from the center of the source, U R is varying with one over R. It becomes smaller, right? And then u theta, there is no tangential velocity here. It's just zero. We don't have any velocity in this direction. All the velocities are in the radial direction. Okay. So now let's find the uh, complex potential for this. So I'm going to use this formula again for this type of flow. So here... I will just yeah I will just use this one so uh, let me do this so we have I don't want the other one so I'm going to use. this formula because I just want to use it uh, in terms of the um, cylindrical coordinates system, okay? So now let's just replace and substitute u r and u theta from above. So for u r, we have m over 2 pi r. And then for theta, it is just going to be 0. And then times e to the minus i theta. 
So this is going to be, I'm going, I, I will bring the EI theta, because it's minus negative, to the denominator. So I have two pi r e to the i theta. And what is r e i theta? Here we have it. It's just z, right? r e to power i theta is just going to be z. So our complex variable z. So this means this becomes m2 over 2 pi z. So df is just 2 pi, m over 2 pi z. So if now we integrate this, fz is going to be m over 2 pi. What is the integral of 1 over z? It is logarithm or ln of z, right? And if you want to write this for at z naught instead of z0, when, z, when the center is at z naught, so here we assume the center is just the, at the center, at the um, uh, point z0 of the coordinate system, but imagine it is at, at z0, like z0 could be anywhere, like if it is x and y, you can have the for source flow here, and this is going to be z0 at point z0, so, rather than just here. So this can be x naught and this could be y naught. So z naught is x naught plus i y naught. Okay. So there, f z is going to be the complex potential is going to be m over two pi ln of z minus z naught. Okay, so this is going to be the complex potential, and these are important because we are going to use them later, but this is going to be the complex potential for a source flow at point z naught. Okay, so now let's solve and find another example. This time I want to find the complex potential for a potential vertex at again z naught. So what was a potential vertex for a potential vertex um, was an irrotational flow where the flow was have a vertex where it is kind of um, rotating so the flow is rotating in the tangential direction Okay, so the radial velocity is zero, and the tangential velocity, if you remember from a potential vertex that we had, is going to be this, right? Circulation over two pi r, so I'm just gonna use that. Circulation over two pi r. So now let's find the complex potential here again. So we have this, and this is going to be the, this is the definition of that. So let's just um, 
substitute u r is going to be zero and then u theta is going to be i times circulation over two pi r e to the minus i theta which is going to be minus i circulation over two pi r e to the minus i theta and I am going to bring this to the to the denominator again so we have r e to the i theta and e to the i r e to the i theta is again z so this is going to be minus i circulation over 2 pi z and so we just need to take an integral here so f z is going to be so f z is going to be minus i circulation over 2 pi L and Z, right? What is the integral of uh, 1 over Z? It's going to be L and Z. And for a vertex at Z naught, the relation, the complex potential is going to be minus I circulation over 2 pi ln z minus z naught okay so this is going to be the complex potential for a vortex or a complex or a potential vortex okay so so far we solved uh, found a uh, complex potential for three canonical flows and now i want to just mention a fourth canonical flow and just write the complex potential for that and based on that we can find uh, how the velocities actually look like so we are going to do it in a reverse order so now we have flow in a sector of angle pi over n okay so what does this mean so say we have a, a sector which can have this angle so let's say This sector can have uh, let's say this can be a sector and then this can have some angle and we want to find the velocity the complex potential for this the flow inside this sector so say now the sector is like this so this has angle alpha so say here alpha is pi over n and we want to see how the flow actually uh, moves within this and also what are streamlines and the complex potential. So the complex potential for this flow
is given as if z equals to u times z to power n. Okay, so now let's see what are, based on this, what are going to be the, um, the string functions and velocity potential. So here we know that Fz is given, so it's just u times zn, and instead of z, I'm, I just want to write r to the i theta. So I will have u times r e to the i theta instead of z. And then this is to power n. So this equals to u r to power n and then e to the power i n theta and this equals to, to what? what? What what was the definition of this complex potential? Phi plus i psi, right? Velocity potential plus the string function. So now let me just expand this u r to the power n. This e i to the n theta is going to be cosine n theta plus i sine n theta, okay? So based on this, I can simply say the real parts are gonna be equal and the imaginary parts are gonna be equal. So phi, which is the real part of complex potential equals to u r to the power n cosine n theta velocity potential and then psi is the string function is going to be the imaginary part of this complex potential. So u to the u u r to the n sine n theta, which is this part, the imaginary part, is going to be the string function. So based on this, we can say something interesting, and that is at theta equals to zero and pi over n, what's going to happen? Sine of n theta is going to be sine of zero is going to be sine equal to sine of also pi over n times n, or let me write it this way, n, or n times pi over n, which is just pi, and these all equal to zero. So, psi at these points, the extreme function is gonna be zero. Okay, so let's see what is that. It means that if you have this, The velocity potential, uh, the, the psi, right at this border, which is where, which is where alpha theta becomes pi to the n, right? Here you have it. 
and also at theta equals to zero, zero, which is just here, this psi, so this is theta equals to zero, and this is theta equals to pi over n, psi here is just going to be zero okay so what is wz so wz is let's now let's find the um, the velocities here so wz which is going to be a df over dz and z here f f is u u times z to the n so the differentiate the derivative of that with respect to z is going to be u times n so n times u z to the n to the minus one right what is the f over dz here it's going to be n u z to the minus z to the power n to the n minus one right so it's going to be n times u times z to power n minus 1. So instead of z, I want to write r e i theta. So I'm going to have n u and I have r e to the i theta to power n minus 1, which is going to be n u r to n minus 1 e to i n minus 1 theta which equals to n u r n minus 1 and then i can just uh, write this this term as two terms first e to the power i n theta times e to the minus i theta okay so this equals what this equals to n u r to the minus n n r to the n minus 1 then we have cosine n theta what is i n theta cosine n theta plus i sine n theta to power e to the minus i theta and let's look at it here Just consider this now, based on this, we have this part, and then the rest is here. So based on that, I can write ur equals to n u r to the power n minus one cosine and theta and u theta is going to be this is minus that so i need to have a minus sign here so minus n u r and minus one sine and theta So we can find actually the velocities if you have the comp if you have the complex potential. So now let me just uh, show these here. So if your for this if your theta is between pi over two n and zero, 
then your cosine and theta is going to be positive, right? So cosine and theta is going to be positive. And when that's the case, that means that here, you see it here, right? Cosine and theta. So our UR, the radial velocity is going to be positive. What, and, and when theta is between pi over 2n and pi over n, then cosine and theta is going to be between pi over 2 and pi. So this is going to be negative, and so ur is going to be also negative. The radial velocity is going to be also negative. So say, now I want to show the velocity streamlines here based on these two. And you can plot it more accurately. But it's going to be something like this. So if this is that is pi over n, and this is going to be theta equals to pi over 2n. So when the velocity potential is here, between 0 and 2 pi over n, the radial velocity is going to be positive. And the velo when we are here, when the theta is between pi over 2n, and pi over n, the radial velocity is going to be negative. Negative meaning this is going to be coming this way, and this is going to go this way. So this is going to be the flow direction, how it moves. So if you plot this accurately and also cal calculate it for u theta, then what you are going to get is something like this. And the velocity, these are going to be the streamlines. Velocity goes here and then comes back for this flow. around uh, at a sector of angle pi over n. So this is going to how the velocities actually look like. Okay? So I want to investigate another case. So this was like a, any case with pi over 10 over n. So imagine assume that alpha is 3 pi half or n is 2 third what we do what we are going to have so this is the alpha right so it's just a corner so a corner flow so here we have like something like this And now I want to show the streamline, so
for this specific flow. So UR here is going to be based on this formula that we had. And U R N minus instead of N, I put two thirds, so it's going to be minus one third cosine two theta over three. And U theta is going to be, so let me just instead of N write is two third minus two third U R two minus one third sine of 2 theta over 3 and when theta <coughs> when theta is between 0 and pi 2 times 2 third which is going to be 3 pi over 4 then UR is going to be positive. And when theta is between 3, por, 3 pi 4 and 3 pi 2, then U theta, UR, is going to be negative because cosine theta right based on cosine theta I'm just saying this so here what we are going to have and also in both of these if theta is between 3 pi 2 and 0 so 2 theta over 3 is going to be between pi and 0. So sine of 2 theta over 3 is going to be always positive. So u theta is going to be always positive in this, this, in this region. So what is... Now, let me show these lines. So here... So this is theta 0, this is theta equals to 3 pi 2, and this is theta equals to 3 pi 4. So in this region, in all of them, first, u theta is going to be positive. Sorry, uh, I think I made a mistake here. Sine theta is greater than is greater than zero, but here we have a minus sign here. I forgot. So u theta is going to be negative actually. So in all of these, u theta is going to be negative, meaning that it is going to go clockwise. So the direction here is going to be this way. Okay, the direction of the flow. And in this region u r is going to be lower so we have like this way and then u r is negative so we have this is going to be u r is going to be the theta and in this region u r is going to be positive and u theta is going to be negative so this is going to be the overall direction of the flow, right? So this is u theta, u r, u r, u theta. So if you want to plot the streamlines, they are going to look like this. 
So the first one is going to be like this. It will rotate here. So this is going to be the direction of the, that. So this is the one streamline. And then the other streamline It's going to be something like this. So these are going to be the streamlines and then you can you can plot the rest like that. Okay, so just here, I just want to talk about one point, which is kind of a singular point here in this uh, flow that uh, we can get, and that is just uh, right at the corner. So let's calculate the velocity right at the corner. So here, UR is going to be two-third UR minus one third cosine two theta over three and our radius is just if i want to if i want to show it again two u over three r to one third cosine two theta over three and the radius is just zero at the corner right at the center. So r equals to zero, and thus radial velocity here is going to be infinity. And also the tangential velocity. So the velocities are going to be uh, infinity there, and so this is kind of a singular point there in this complex potential. And so in this region, in real world, we know this is not going to happen, right? So we, we cannot have an infinite velocity here. So what's going to happen is that the viscosity takes place in reality. So in reality, we will have viscosity which will not allow the velocity to reach infinity. And here, just remember that for these flows, all, all this analysis is for inviscid flow, so we assume there is no viscosity here, okay? So we, we have ignored viscosity in all these calculations. But in reality, we can have viscosity, and so there, the viscosity takes place and kicks in, and so the velocity is not going to become infinity, and we are going to have actually a flow separation at that point. OK, so these were four examples uh, for four canonical flows where we have a velocity uh, complex potentials. And these are very important because later on we are going to use them and then this linearity property of this complex potential to solve the combination of these cases, which is we can solve a lot of different uh, problems Okay, and streamlines. So let's briefly review what we learned today. So we talked about complex potentials. So we defined that, which is going to be um, by dividing it in real and imaginary part, which is just a sum of the uh, velocity potential and the stream function. And then we define the complex velocity as df over dz, which is going to be u minus iv in the Cartesian coordinate and ur minus i theta e to the minus i theta in r theta coordinate. And then we calculated this complex potential for canonical flows like 
uniform flow with, with angle alpha, so the F, the complex potential, is going to be UZ e, uh, e to the minus I alpha. And then for a source flow at Z naught, the complex potential is going to be M over 2 pi times LN Z minus Z naught. And for a potential vortex at Z naught, this is going to be minus I circulation over 2 pi times LN Z minus Z naught. And for a flow in a sector of angle pi over n, Fc was given, which is u times z to the n. And so based on that, we calculated the velocities in different situations. So for, uh, for something like this, and also for a specific example of n equals to 2 third, this is going to, this is uh, how the velocity potential uh, looks like for Uh, for a flow with alpha equals to 3 pi a half or n equals to 2 third. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone.